Bible handy, turn to Luke chapter 12. Luke chapter 12, and while it says verse 32 to 40 up there, we will cover those verses, but we need to back up a little bit to verse 22, because verse 32 is sort of an odd place to break this chapter up. So, we need to back up 10 verses to 22 if we could. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or about your body, what you will wear. For life is more than food, and the body more than clothes. Consider the ravens. They do not sow or reap. They, do not have, they, they have no storm room or barn, yet, guard, yet God feeds them. And how much more valuable are you than the birds? Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to your life? Since you cannot do this very thing, why do you worry about the rest? Consider how the flowers grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, how much more will he clothe you, you of little faith? And do not set your heart on what you will, on what you will eat or drink. Do not worry about it, for the pagan world runs after, after all such things. And your father knows that you need them. But seek his kingdom, and these things will be given to you as well. Do not be afraid, little flock, for your Father has been pleased to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give to the poor. Provide purses for yourselves that will not wear out, a treasure in heaven that will never fail, where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Be dressed, ready for service, and keep your lamps burning, like servants waiting for their master to return to a wedding banquet, so that when he comes and knocks, they can immediately open the door for him. It will be good for those servants whose master finds them watching when he comes. Truly I tell you, he will dress himself to serve, will have them recline at the table, and will come wait on them. It will be good for those servants whose master finds them ready, even if he comes in the middle of the night or toward daybreak. But understand this, if the owner of the house had not known uh, at what hour the thief was coming, he would, not let, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready, because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect Him. Heavenly Father, we are thankful for Your Word. And now, Holy Spirit, come and illuminate the Word to our hearts today. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Quick background to the text. Jesus is in the midst of a giant crowd. And in this midst of this giant crowd, Jesus takes his disciples sort of off to the side for a second and has a few things to teach them. He had just finished teaching. And a couple of people from the crowd piped up and said, you know, tell my brother to give me my, my share of my inheritance. And... Jesus taught them about greed. And from that, he launches into this little small group study with his disciples in the midst of this crowd. And I've been in the small group setting, and it's hard to do a small group setting when there's lots of other people around. And yet, Jesus chose, chooses this moment to speak something to his disciples. And his message is clear, and it can be broken up into three easy, quick points. Number one, 
Don't worry. Number two, relax. And number three, the Boy Scout motto, be prepared. Be prepared. First he says, don't worry. Don't worry about your life, your food, your body. A couple of us are probably young enough to be on Facebook. We, we, we probably have that friend that likes to post every instance he or she goes to the gym. You, know, you can go to the gym without posting that on Facebook. We're glad that you're healthy. We're glad that you care about your body. But we don't need to know about it every day. Don't worry about your body. Some, like me, need to be a little more worried about their body than they should be. Since getting my driver's license, I don't bike as much as I used to. And I still like to eat like a teenager. And uh, that has an adverse effect on the body. Hence, I've picked up a few pounds since Paul and I went to Bible College. Don't worry about your body. Don't worry about how you clothe yourselves. And think about who, don't worry about money. And think about who he is talking about, talking to. His disciples, they were fishermen, a couple were tax collectors. So they, 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 they had. At one point, some of them had money, some of them didn't. So they were worriers. They worried about stuff that they needed to get. Jesus says, no, don't worry about that. You can't add a single hour to your life by worrying. In fact, medical studies would suggest that if we stress over things too much, our lifespans will decrease. Jesus says, don't worry. You can't add a single cubit to your height. Huh. I am five foot ten. When I was in grade eight, basketball was one of my favorite activities. In grade eight, I was five foot seven, and I had dreams of being taller and one day joining the NBA. Got into the plans, stunted my growth in the 10th or 11th grade, and here I am, not playing in the NBA. Not even close to six foot. Can't add a single cubit to your height. I'm worrying. Huh. Forget all about that stuff, Jesus says. Set your eyes on the kingdom. Set your eyes on eternal things, things that matter, things that will enhance your life, things that will enhance your spiritual life and your spiritual growth, things that will make you become more like Jesus. One of the people that I, I occasionally listen to online, and I occasionally listen to their music is uh, uh, people from Hillsong Church. And one of the things that they say often is the goal is Jesus. The goal is to be like Him. Fix your thoughts on things that are eternal. Eternal. Don't worry. Jesus continues. Relax. Don't sweat the big thing. Relax. We are so preoccupied with getting food, clothes, in shape, trinkets. I'm a gadgets guy. I'm preaching from a tablet. I have two laptops and a whole bunch of other electronic goodies. I like gadgets. Jesus says, in the midst of all of your getting, don't be so bogged down by that in pursuit of getting stuff and miss out on receiving God. Don't miss out. Don't be too preoccupied with getting that you miss out on receiving. The message reads this passage like this. What I'm trying to do here is to get you to relax, not to be so preoccupied with getting so that you can't respond to God's giving. 
People who don't know God and the way he works fuss over these things. But you know both God and how he works. Steep yourself in God reality, God initiative, God provisions. You'll find all your, you will find all your everyday human concerns will be met. Don't be afraid of missing out. You're my dearest friends. The Father wants to give you the very kingdom itself. Seek to find your treasure in eternal things. For where your treasure is, Jesus says, your heart will be also. And then he says something that goes against every cell in my Dutch body. Be generous. Be generous. Sell your possessions and give to those who are in need. That's a good thing. And this is just moments after he said to the, to the people fighting over inheritance and, and, and teaching about greed, how bad greed is, Jesus says, let's, 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 do, let, let's do better than that. Let's be better than that. Let's be generous. Let's give to those who are in need so that people aren't within want. Be generous. Give to the poor. Give yourselves a bank. The message says, give yourself a bank that can't go bankrupt. A bank in heaven from ba uh, uh, a bank in heaven far from bank robbers, safe from embezzlers. A bank you can bank on. It's obvious, isn't it? The place where your treasure is is the place you will most you will most want to be and end up being. So place your heart, your thoughts, your minds on eternal things. And then the danger part of the text. Be prepared. Be prepared. One of the things that Jesus talks about a lot is his second coming, his return. In the Nicene Creed, we have uh, 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 this little this little sentence. The Nicene Creed is a, is, is a written statement of faith from early on in the church. It says this, He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. The apostles preached it. Jesus preached it. The early church preached it. Someday, Jesus is coming back. And the main emphasis in Scripture on this is encouragement. And the admonition to get ready. Jesus says, be prepared. Be dressed. Be ready for service. And again, the message says this, keep your shirt on. Keep your shirt on. I love that. I, I, I love the way Eugene Peterson words it there. Keep your shirt on. Again, pursue the eternal things to get ready for His coming. How do we do that? When we pursue the Christian disciplines, we, we worship, and, and worship goes so much further than just singing a couple of songs in church on Sunday. Scripture makes it clear that we are to offer God, offer to God ourselves as living sacrifices. This is our act of worship. If you don't believe me, look at Romans chapter 12 and verse 1. Worship is literally everything that we do. It's not just singing a few hymns and a few choruses, although that's good. And it's important to come together in, in corporate worship. Everything we do should glorify the Father. Be prepared. Live a life of worship. Fast. Fast. Occasionally stop eating. And in those moments of when you decide to skip a meal and stop eating, 
It's, it's not for so that you can lose a pound or two. It's so that you can focus your thoughts and your and, 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 and your attention on Jesus and pray fast and right after fast and right after fasting pray pursue prayer talk with God talk with Him argue with Him fight with Him if you have to talk to Him develop your relationship with Him let Him speak to you He can do that study the scriptures mark up your Bibles if that doesn't offend you if that does offend you, buy a Bible where it doesn't offend you and mark it up. Write notes in the margins, highlight the verses, memorize scripture. It's not just for Sunday school, it's for everybody. Memorize this stuff. Get the word inside you. Serve your local community, the church, and outside of these four walls. You see a need in the church, fill it. Fill it. I'm expecting at least one person this week to call Pastor Paul. Pastor Paul, is there something that I can do? Yeah, he's paid staff. But he shouldn't bear the brunt of 100% of the work of the church. Serve the local community. Serve the church. Serve those outside the church. Be a loving do the people that live around this building know that it is filled with people who love Jesus and who love them? Serve your community. Share the gospel. Share the gospel. Share your faith. Share your faith. A year ago, uh, I started playing tennis with uh, a Korean queen student. And uh, in the midst of one of the one of the games that we were playing, uh, we were sitting on the bench after after a match, just chatting, and uh, we were talking. Uh, a city in Israel came up, and he had never heard of the city. I said, "Okay, well maybe you've, you've heard of Jerusalem, right?" He said, yeah, 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 I've heard of Jerusalem. Okay, that's good. That's a good start. Oh, Bethlehem, and he had a blank stare on his face. Really, you've not, not heard of Bethlehem. You're not familiar at all with the Christmas story. And he goes, well, I've, I've never been one for Santa Claus. And again, he's like, oh, wait a minute. How about the other Christmas story? Jesus' birth. Three wise men showing up. The angels proclaiming his birth to the shepherds. He's never heard of that. It gave just a small opportunity to share my faith with somebody who lives among us, who has had opportunity to hear this stuff, yet hasn't. Share your faith. Share your faith. Promote the kingdom. Promote the kingdom. Three takeaways. Three things to remember Anything that I have said this morning for you to take home. So if you're taking notes, this is a good time to jot three things down. Number one, worrying or fear is in direct opposition to faith. Worrying or, or, or fear is in direct opposition to faith. Faith, if you don't understand what that is, Biblical faith is simple. It simply means this. Forsaking all, I trust Him. Or, forsaking all, I trust Jesus. <coughs> forsaking all, I trust Jesus. Worry or fear is in direct opposition to faith. Trust Jesus. Trust Jesus. We're worrying about stuff. We're not trusting Him. If we're not pursuing eternal things, we're not trusting Him. If we're not ready for His return, whenever that might be, if 
it's today, if it's a hundred years from now, we're not trusting Him. Worrying or fear is in direct opposition to faith. Number two, don't be too preoccupied with getting that you missed out on, that you missed out on receiving. Don't be too preoccupied with getting that you miss out on receiving. Pastor Paul and I had uh, a prof in Bible college who was quite fond of saying, in all of your getting, in all of your getting, get him. Get him. The goal is Jesus. The goal is to be like him. Don't be preoccupied with getting and filling your life with stuff that you miss out on receiving what God wants to do in your life, through your life, in the midst of His people. Don't be too preoccupied with that stuff. And lastly, this morning, dare to do life differently. Dare to do life differently. Live like Jesus could return at any moment. Live like Jesus could return at any moment. Pursue those eternal things. Develop and cultivate a relationship with Him. Trust Him. Abandon all before Him. Live a life of surrender. In my first church that I served, in, in my last Sunday I was there, one of the musicians in the church played a hymn that he said, best described who I am. It's a simple hymn. I surrender all. Jesus wants us to live a life of surrender. And I dare you to live, do life differently. Live like he could return at any moment. Live that life of surrender that he is calling us to. Let's pray. Father, Father, we are so thankful for your word. We are so thankful that it is sharper than any double-edged sword that can pen penetrate deep into our lives. Father, all the scripture readings this morning were uh, challenging. And I pray, God, that we would take up the challenge of, of, of living a life that is pleasing to you, that is sold out to you, that is a life of sacrifice, a life of surrender. Father, I pray that, uh, that we would be a people, a people that would follow hard after you, that would seek you, early in the morning, late at night. That we would be people of the word, that the scriptures would, would penetrate deep and then flow out of us. I pray, God, that we would be Jesus to the community around us. So that in the midst of our preparing for you, for you to return, we can prepare others. Holy Spirit, I, I pray that you transform us into the people that you are calling us to be. That you transform us more and more into the image of Jesus in us. In Christ's name I pray.